Right. right. So this this seminar, I've now finished the, the, the seminars which were based on uh, lots of examples. So for today and the next three seminars, it's going to be much more interactive. I'm going to ask much more questions. We're going to try and come to some sort of consensus together, some sort of conclusions based on based on what we're going to see. So rather than me just telling you stuff, we're going to try and agree on stuff, or what we think is, is, is a good way to look at things. So it means it'll be more interactive even just from the start. So last week I spoke a bit about self-driving cars as part of my AI talk, and the idea of, well, what happens if a self-driving car hits and kills someone? Who's at fault? Who's, who's to blame here? Now there's sort of a legal and societal principle so that society needs someone to, to, to hold accountable. What's the word you used yesterday? Yeah, so, so when something goes wrong, we want to be angry at someone. We want to go and spank someone because something went wrong. And the thing is that you can't go and spank a robot. It doesn't work. It doesn't give you the same sort of like a positive feeling of retribution. You need a person. You need a person to express your anger at. So, we sort of spoke a bit about this, like, well, we can't blame the robot, so, so who might we blame? Who might we sort of hold accountable? I want to extend that idea a bit now, and sort of weave in the trolley problem, which I think I mentioned a few lectures ago. <laughs> so a self-driving car will, will go along, and it'll, it, it'll sort of decide when to turn left, when to turn right, when to hit the brakes, when to keep going, and it might come across an emergency situation. So it's got to do something. It's got to decide what to do. So I think, okay, it'll, it'll try and, and do the best thing it can in an emergency, the emergency situation. Right, what's, what's the best thing it can? What does this even mean? <laughs> so in particular, which of the following three should a self-driving car optimize over? I'm going to present you three options. The first is... Total number... Lives. So we should minimize or maximize, depending on your point of view of the world, but I think minimize the total number of lives lost in the process. So maximize the total number of lives saved. Or you could say, well, should we optimize over the, the lives of the occupants of the car? So it's driving a car, it's got people in the car, do whatever it takes to protect the people in the car. <coughs> or should it optimize over the total insurance payout? So should it be built in order to minimize the total insurance payout that, that, that occurs after this, 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 this critical incident? Or should it be something else? <coughs> so let's discuss this for, for a moment. Who thinks that, 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 that minimizing the total number of lives lost <coughs> is the best thing to be optimizing over here? It's circumstantial. Okay, so what else would you weave into that? I'll, I'll, I'll go through these ones and then we'll, start to, we'll see if we can weave things together to make it a more complicated one. But does anyone think that this is, this is the obvious right one to be optimizing over? A couple of names. Okay. Anyone think that optimizing over the lives of the occupants of the car is a good one to be optimizing over. So save the people inside the car. One. So I think we had about sort of four here. We had about one here. Who thinks that we should minimize the total insurance payout? And this is a good proxy for doing the least damage to society. We have no economists in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, and who thinks it should be something else? One, two, two, two people say something else. Okay, I'll go from bottom up. Is it clear what the something else should be? No. 
Any man. He built the car with body cut. Okay, so. And we've got one for idea like this, which is, which is, which is corporate self interest. So optimize the company. So this is this is this captures that. So I want to go up the list here because these are ideas that people do put out there as to what we should optimize over. If you optimize over term insurance payouts, yes. Um, I'm thinking out loud, so clearly me, this isn't a cogitated position. Actually. I think that the number three is the best one in that insurance payout might measure, might, might be an agreed measure of, um, uh, of, of damage. Okay. That's Socially agreed measure of damage. That, that, that's an interesting one because it converts back to something that we're all familiar with, which is we convert it down to a number. We like numbers, we're in math faculty. And actually, society understands numbers. We can do everything down to, down to numbers. Which of these? Yeah. <laughs> so you might have to do compute some sort of, perhaps you can compute some sort of average. Check with your lawyer, like how good is your legal team? If your legal team is very good, then your insurance payout might be very low. So I want to just mention this for a second that in each of these, I can, I can at least see places where you might get some people being disproportionately affected. So if, you, if you're going over to an insurance payout, then if you're driving a shitbox of a car and you're approaching a Ferrari, and your, your machine's going to go, well, and like the Ferrari, boom, and off the side of the cliff you go. That minimizes, this, so probably minimizes the, the total insurance payout. Something like that. So if you're driving a very cheap car, then you're always going to be inadvertently, on average, avoiding very expensive cars. Because that's going to contribute heavily to your insurance payout. What about the lives of the occupants of the car? Well, if you've got one person in the car and, 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 and a bus full of, full of school kids, then you're going to optimize over yourself and in for the bus full of, or like slow in front of the bus full of school kids you go, <laughs> because that satisfies that algorithm. If you're optimizing over total number of lives, well then, single, people in, 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 in single occupant vehicles are going to have a much lesser chance of, of being saved by this algorithm. So if it's your car versus someone else's car, there's some sort of risk as to, as to what should be done, or there's only one person in your car and five people in that car, well, the numbers add up that way. Yeah? That's something that we see, for example, um, um, uh, military aircraft pilots make that decision quite regularly in that they, if they're in a position of crashing, they work very hard to not crash into a populated zone, but to crash into a less populated zone. We see it actually, I, I, I have in my lifetime seen cases where the pilot rode the plane down and, and uh, sacrificed his life in order to avoid hitting so populated, some populated area, and was much heralded as a hero. So, would the pilot have survived if they crashed into the populated area? I think quite pro probably they would because they would have had time to eject. I, I see oh, right, thing. right, right. So rather than eject in the cases I'm thinking of, yeah. the, the pilot rode the aircraft down so as to steer it in between, you know, the school or the hospital, yeah. or whatever it was. And that's when there's nothing you can do. So that's... Yeah. The, 
that's a military um, scenario, which I think might be slightly different to, to this, which is not just you know, civilian, but also corporate. So I've got two other factors here. Well, the, the pilot has something to lose, which is his own, his or her own life. The, this algorithm, well, I'm sure I've got a backup copy somewhere in the hard drives back in the office, so, so the algorithm doesn't have as much to lose. Now, you can have one life, or you can have you know, zero lives lost, but a hundred people paralyzed. So, so these are, all of a sudden, these kind of become a bit fuzzy. It's not so clear that you can even exactly optimize in a way like this. Well, again, in that case, was there a chance that the, 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 the occupants and the pilot could have survived that? Yeah, but, but I think that, 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 that there is there is a, a subtle distinction, which is if you if you're going so if it's the case that you're pretty sure you're going to die anyway, then that's a different optimization problem to am I going to die and, and, and these five people don't, yeah. or I live and those five people die. That's a slightly different optimization problem. Can I step back a second? Um, I mean, I can, we can all see where you're going with this idea that this is, that some, somebody, this is going to get coded in in some sense yep. to, the, to, the, to the, the, the function of the car. Now, I'm wondering, in, in the corporate situation where you know, the car maker is not, is not a mum and dad operation in the garage in the back of their, of their house on not the Not for self-driving cars. It's not, this is, this is a highly corporate activity. Would the mathematicians, and let's, let's simplify it and say it is a bunch of mathematicians who are writing the code. I mean, that's not going to be the case, but something like that. So I've got in, in you know, room 101, I've got a, a, a couple of banks of math nodes who are writing the code that's running this, this machine, this car. Would we ask the mathematicians to make these ethical decisions? Or would these ethical decisions, I mean, you're choosing amongst those five, or N, for a large N, um, would, would, would that get left to a bunch of lawyers and maybe ethicists, <laughs> I doubt, and um, can just be a bunch of lawyers and, and, can, can, and accountants. Would, we, would this be the proper domain for that position? I, I think my, my point here is that the language and, and, and phrasing that you might receive from from, a, from an office full of lawyers and, and, and accountants and, and God knows what other horrible, horrible humans. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the, the, accountants, not lawyers. The, 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 the language that, that, that they use to, to describe what they think is the, the ethical slash business case to, 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 to implement might not be compatible with the language of mathematics and how you actually implement this. So a very easy you know, explanation might be something like, or well, a stupid will be, you know, that do the best thing possible. And my first look at that and go, what the hell are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> or it might be, it might be overly rigid. It might say, you know, we want to just minimize number of lives. 
Number of lives lost. And you go, okay, and then we get back to, well, all right, then we'll, we'll give 100 people, you know, quadriplegia to save, to save one life. It could be that the, the, the description given to the mathematicians is either too strong or too weak. It either, it either tells them to do something too much or it leaves too, too, too much open for them to sort of fill in the gap. Because the lawyers aren't going to be able to write the code and go back and analyze it. If you think that the lawyers of the company are going to be scrutinizing your code, you're quite possibly mistaken. So if if you code up the wrong thing, so so so, so if they say, um, you know, kill the largest number of people possible. <laughs> you go, all right. Well, I was just told to do that, so yeah, up to go. Yep, I can do that. Boom, done. And it turns out that later on, society decides, no, that really wasn't a good idea. You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you should have known that that was daft. Who's at fault? Who's done something wrong? Is it the coder for coding up this possibly obviously wrong thing, possibly a bit hazy? Is it the person in high command who gave the order, who gave the instruction? Is it a combination of the two? How do you assign responsibility here? If this is wrong and society decides that it's wrong, whose fault is it? Are we allowed to ask the point at this point because I bet this has been this has been sorted out in law somewhere in the last 3,000 years. I, I, I want to sort of finish my, my, my examples and, and, and then we will seek legal counsel. We're being billed by the hour here, so I'm trying to make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and she will tell us sort of what... I think it's important for us to pause and think about this. If this is wrong, if, it's like, if it turns out, well, maybe you shouldn't have coded that up like that, who is held to account? And I'll break this down a bit later into three different ways of being held to account. I think the problem there is that there's no one with the, with the capability of fully deciding what to do. Because the, 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 the lawyers and, and the managers speak one language and mathematicians speak another, and I don't think I don't think either side has a full context to understand the whole picture at once, individually. How do they link together? <laughs> okay, so that's something we, we, we have to actually ponder and think about.